Happy New Year, everybody. 2018. So far, so good. It's starting off well for me. And uh, let me turn my little light on here. And I hope it's doing well for you thus far, two weeks in. This is a new episode of In the Hot Box. And I am working on a new book. I just finished a very short book on a cryptocurrency, kind of for fun. Just wanted to read about it because I put some money into it. We'll see how that goes. Not a lot, just enough, just like play, playing around stuff. And uh, now I'm working on a new book, a work of fiction, called Daddy 3.0, A Comedy of Errors by Rob Armstrong. And it's, it's funny because, you know, I'm a dad. And uh, in the story, the guy's wife is a doctor. My wife is a nurse. And back in the day, you know, more hospital related. But now it's office related stuff. We, you know, we're not doing the exciting stuff anymore point is I kind of relate to this and it's fun. So today I'm going to be reading from a selection as I do my thing. Not too long, just a little bit to give you an idea of what this book's about. Uh, this is in the second chapter of the book and uh, just a little bit about what's going on here. They've got the little girls, they're twins, and they're at a Chinese restaurant that the wife is sick of and she has a rough schedule and this guy's a stay-at-home dad. Um, so let me start, okay? Let me get this rolling and then we'll go from there. All right, where was I? There we go, here we go. Get a steamed vegetable dish over rice. You'll feel better after you eat it. I don't like eating junky food after a long day. It's just not fun for me going to restaurants anymore. The girls aren't good at eating out, Liz said. And we really can't afford it anymore. Liz used to just roll with stuff. And she had had lower food standards. That always gets me. She had had. Anytime you see two words in a row, you think you messed up. Liz used to just roll with stuff. And she had had lower food standards. At Berkeley, she loved. <laughs> That's why it's going to be a short one today. At Berkeley... She had loved to get cheap Indian and Chinese food from sidewalk trucks and had rarely gotten sick. Whenever I had joined her, the same food had run through me like the Union General Sherman through Atlanta. Liz had a cast-iron stomach impervious to spice and grease. Surgical residency and fellowship had definitely put a strain on her intestinal tract. Hopefully, in a year when the fellowship would end, she would have better hours and more sleep. Her disposition would also improve. I think I did... I don't like how I did that one. My ear is too critical sometimes. Hold on. Clear the breaths, folks. Clear them out. Hopefully, in a year when the fellowship would end and she would have better hours and more sleep, her disposition would also improve. I wanted my happy Liz back. We used to have so much fun before the kids. I nodded. It was easier to agree with her than to defend the limp and greasy food of Mandarin Deli. I was not big on cooking at home because, basically, I was lazy. As a distraction, I told her about the park, including Supermom's comment that she should slow down at the hospital in order to have more time for the twins. She's being bitchy because Mitch believes I have a shot at getting a good recommendation from John Warner for the Hunter Clinic. Whoever gets in with Warner gets the job with the practice, Liz said. Dr. John Warner was the head of surgery at the Hospital for Special Surgery, HSS, arguably the most prestigious orthopedic surgical program in the country. As the chief, Warner was connected with all the private orthopedic practices in the Northeast, the Hunter Clinic on Long Island was one of the more lucrative practices in the country, and one of the hip and knee replacement specialists was about to retire. A position there was coveted. We would need a U-Haul truck to carry home her annual income if she landed that job. In the meantime, we lived as poor grad students, soaking up whatever meager perks the hospital ecosystem kicked off. My earnings potential sucked wind in the current slow job market. Are you thinking we should stay on the East Coast after your fellowship? Maybe. I wished to return to my native soil in San Francisco, but I decided not to push my agenda for the moment. 
Life was not working out for me in New York City as I had hoped, but maybe the tech job market would pick up on the East Coast. Do you think you have any shot at winning over Warner? Always do that. I twist the words around. It's winning. Do you think you have any shot at winning Warner over? Sure, but Mitch is very charming. He is A, very charming. Sure, but Mitch is a very charming and qualified weasel, Liz said. I agreed. Mitch was the typical smug doctor type. He fit the stereotype of a surgeon, holding a high opinion of himself and a firm belief that he belonged at the top of the food chain. I'm hoping Supermom only mildly hates me, but after today, that seems ambitious. Her covenants... Her coven of stay-at-home moms could give me and the girls the brush off. Since when did you care about crap like that? Liz seemed amused. Well, it matters now that I'm home full-time with the girls. Only since the beginning of July, you'll get another great job, and we'll get a nanny. Not so simple. The job market is a crushed beer can right now. New York has nothing. Nobody is putting up any startup money anymore. Doesn't sound right, does it? <clears throat> New York has nothing. Nobody is putting up any startup money anymore. The companies already in business are not hiring webmasters or programmers until things get better. What about your buddy at that startup, selling comic books online, Liz said. Morris wants me to come in to talk, but I don't think they're serious. You'll find something eventually. Just hang in there, sweetheart. Liz stroked my hand. And I'm stroking the end button on this long enough to see, again, that what I do is fun, hard, and difficult. Oh, I'm still recording that, and I don't want that. Let me stop it real quick. Boom. So I'm six minutes and 49 seconds. Hold on. There. Six minutes. So that's six minutes and 40 seconds of that chapter. You heard three minutes of it, maybe? And look how long it took to get through three minutes. Some days that's the case. Not always, but audiobook narration. Look at the truck. See? That kind of stuff. So, once again, thanks for joining me, joining me in the hot box and seeing again what it is to be an audiobook narrator. Again, I always tell folks I am not the best at this. I'm pretty decent. I'm pretty good. But I'm not the best. But that's what you do. You have to study these books and read them and feel them and then do them. And then doing them, you make mistakes. Some people, and I, I'm the same. Some days I go through a chapter with rarely a mistake. And some days I have just my mouth and my brain ain't working. But I get it done. And then when I, when I, when I get the proof back, or hear, I see what I, I didn't make many mistakes at all. Or none, because I'm very critical of myself. But this is a slow process. It can be a slog. So if you are thinking about putting that great voice to work... Um, and getting into audiobooks because anybody can get into this. Your space, your time, and your perseverance and patience because sometimes you want to throw your fist through the monitor. <laughs> but um, if you enjoy it, you deal with it and you do it. So, as we enter 2018, follow your dreams, do what you want, try your best, not everything works out for everybody. I've been fairly blessed. And since I have a full-time real job, I guess maybe in the back of my head, I'm th I think that I can not worry about it because it's not a desperate attempt here to make a living. This is a supplement to my living. And I, I do okay doing this. And I do pretty good in my regular job. But the overarching point here is that no matter what you're doing, if you don't try to do your, your best at the goals you've set and the dreams you have, if you don't try, it's never going to happen anyway. Oops. So, try. Uh, the worst that can happen is you fail. And if you fail, try again. You'll learn from your mistakes. I have. And I certainly have gotten better over the last six, six years. Yeah, well, six years. So, happy 2018. Happy January. We may have another episode this month. We may not. I don't know. Uh, but take care. Subscribe, please. And uh, 
Keep doing what you're doing, folks. Thanks.